All right, let's look behind the scenes at what your proposals look like to a client. This is part two of a video I released earlier this week where I posted an actual job and I started to show you what your profile looked like and what the proposals look like because if you can understand what the client's perspective is on this, then you can better structure your proposals, especially those first two sentences, and also understand how to optimize your profile better in order to see, so that your proposal is seen by the client. And we're gonna discuss a few things here, uh, like whether it's worth boosting your profile or not. And we're gonna take a look at that. Right now I have 47 proposals to sort through. So this is a good example of a job where it's very easy that your proposal or, pro or profile will not be seen. So how do you make sure that it's seen and what are some things that we look at? Um, so on this section, you have, this is what the client is seeing. This is through my client account. You can invite freelancers right here. And if we go into the invite section, Upwork is, is showing profiles based on what they think is most relevant, but also people that have boosted their profile will sometimes get to the top. Um, I've found that on the invite section, it's not easy to find, like I've rarely had the perfect freelancer show up on this first page. Um, and so most of the jobs I've hired for, typically it's just, um, I've just searched out certain keywords and then their job title is very close to that keyword. And then I would click into their profile. But as you can see on the invite freelancer section, there's no text pulled from their about description, their profile, it's literally just their name, their, whether their profile is being boosted, whether they're available now or not, and their job title and what their profile hourly rate is. And, um, and that's what we're seeing there. Let me zoom in, give you a better view of that. And so, yeah, now going over to the proposals that have been sent to this job, um, here's what they look like here. And now real quick, before we get into what you need to be doing to make sure your proposal is seen. Um, if you're looking for some advanced training to really get your profile optimized, your proposals optimized, click the link in the description below. My course Upwork Mastery will take you through exactly how to optimize your profile, write proposals, or how to approach writing proposals because they're not all gonna be the same. You're not gonna copy and paste some template into each one, they all have to be unique but I'm gonna teach you my process for how to figure out how to write a proposal for each thing. And then also um, how to do interviews in a way where you can persuade a client to hire you and communicate your true value. I mean, those few things is what's needed to find clients on Upwork. And that's, the, uh, that's what the course focuses on. It's only $37 right now for the next 50 that sign up. And I will review your Upwork profile for free if you're part of of the of this next 50 and signing up for that course now looking at these profiles here as you can see these top few ones are boosted if you can notice i'm wearing my uh early morning robe <laughs> it's it's uh here in utah it's only 6 a.m um but when we go into these proposals as a client, and I can tell you the client, even the jobs that I've applied to, um, the question here is, do I boost my proposal so that I can be seen or do I boost it to the number one spot? Sometimes the number one spot is a, is like, it's like 30 connects, but if you just boost to the number two spot or the three spot, it's only like 15 connects. I can tell you right now, it's very, you do not need to boost your proposal to the number one spot. Um, th there's psychologically, even when people are searching for a video on YouTube or searching for something on Google, it's rare that people choose the person at the very top because there's something about it that we just don't trust, especially when it labels it as being boosted. Um, when I'm a client, and clients that I know have hired me, uh, I was not at the very top. They scrolled down a bit and then they found me. Now I wasn't at the very end either. I wasn't like on, you know, the very bottom page five kind of a thing. But if you are in the first 10 proposals 
you have a pretty good chance in being seen. And if you're the right fit, they'll click on your proposal, they'll look at your profile, and they'll interview you. So what you need to do before you go deciding whether to boost a proposal is you need to look at the job post and see how many proposals have been submitted. And if only five or less proposals have been submitted, even if only 10 or less proposals have been submitted, it, honestly, it's not worth the connects to go boosting your proposal because there's a very high chance that yours will be seen. Now, if you're submitting to this job only five minutes after it's been posted, then there could be a lot more proposals that come in. But if it's within 24 hours, um, so if it's the next day and there's only under 10 proposals, then yeah, you definitely do not need to boost your proposal to be seen. Um, and also, when you, if you do ever boost your proposal, I mean, I've rarely boosted mine, um, especially if you're responding to an invite, you definitely don't need to boost your proposal because what, so what a client will do is if they invite you to a job, they're going to go over to the uh, section. So when you invite a freelancer, you can view who you've invited and follow up on them first. And clients are more responsive to the people that they invited. Um, but if you ever do boost it, like you can boost it to the number three spot um, and you're still going to be seen. The client will scroll down and look at probably the first 10 proposals on here. Um, and especially the first five. So don't think you need to be in the number one spot to be seen. It just doesn't work like that. Now, if we can, now, if you look here, um, see this first sentence, this is what the client is scanning over. You, you spend the most time when you're writing a proposal, you need to spend the absolute most time writing this first sentence because most of the time the client will only read the preview here. They'll look at the, you know, your rate, they'll look at how you're describing yourself. They'll look at your picture. So your picture needs to be really nice looking like right here. Uh, this girl, her picture is more shady. Um, it's harder to see clearly. Um, this top one's a little bit nicer and some of these are nicer. Um, this one looks like it was almost a picture taking out of a, like a yearbook. So it's not as professional looking. That one's just really far away and the lighting's not as good. Um, your profile picture does matter. So I would spend the extra, if you have to hire somebody, if you don't have the skills or just ask around for some help to get a really nice profile picture, it makes a difference. It makes a first impression on whether the client clicks on your proposal. It really does. And, uh, so, you know, if we, now, if we look in here, like see dear Chad, uh, hello, um, these types of things tend to use up valuable real estate. I know they're trying to be conversational, uh, but you can do that throughout most of your proposal. Um, like even here, she says, good afternoon. I would love to learn more about your need for a virtual assistant. Um, it's a little bit general of a request, um, more specific questions than that are going to get my attention a lot more. Um, or like this, hi, Chad, I hope you're well, I came across your job listing and I'm very much interested in working with you as a virtual assistant. You just wasted an entire first sentence just saying, I'm really interested in working with you and as a virtual assistant opposed to trying to persuade me on why I should hire you as a virtual assistant. You need to cut right into what are my goals? Like in my job post. I mentioned why I wanted a virtual assistant, why I needed a virtual assistant. Uh, I mentioned that it had to do with saving time. If you can identify my goal behind the job in that first sentence, I'm going to see that you understand that goal better. And I'm more likely to click on your proposal because you get why I'm even posting this job to begin with. So if we click on this, then what it does is it brings up a preview of the rest of the cover letter. Okay. And I can say right now, this cover letter is slightly long as a client when I'm scanning through multiple proposals, this whole second paragraph, if that was gone, that would be a good cover letter letter length. Um, it starts to push to be too long and then you can scroll down and now you see the rest of the profile and late ratings, reviews and all that. Um, 
and so that's that's what that looks like uh so again it just kind of highlights the importance of really working on those first two sentences and making sure that those are really optimized well so if we go into one of these cover letters let's see here hello i'm very interested in your virtual assistant role and would love to be considered so she just spent an entire sentence kind of wasting the space just saying how much she would love to be considered for the job opposed to jumping right into what the experience is um I was most recently an executive assistant at a fast paced tech company and have 15 years of experience in operations, marketing and administration. I'm very confident in my ability to proactively support a leader and I bring a high level of efficiency communication initiative to an environment. Currently I'm freelancing as a content strategist for a branding agency and as a copywriter for a marketing firm. Okay. I've had to quickly learn a variety of new tools. Okay, so she is touching on the fact, so I made a point in my job post that you need to be a quick learner because there's things that I'll train you on and as long as you can learn quickly, it's okay that you don't have the experience in everything. Um, thanks in advance for your consideration. Now, if I were to read through this though, she didn't ask any questions. When you ask questions, it makes me more willing to respond and start the interview process. Um, also this could very easily be a cover letter. This could ever very easily be a template that she just copies and pastes to any virtual assistant job that she applies to. Um, I'm not seeing anything overly unique to my job post. Um, and it reads like that. And the vast majority of, of people that submit to, to jobs on Upwork are trying to just get out as many proposals as possible and they're not touching on the specific things and even the wording that you mentioned in your job post to show that they really read it thoroughly and they're trying to create something unique for you. Um, and also focusing on the years of experience doesn't really matter to clients most of the time. It's okay if you mention it. Um, sometimes they wanna know that you've been in the business for a while, but for the most part, talking about the results you've helped your clients achieve. I helped them save this much time. I helped them save this much money. I helped, this is how much their business growed throughout the time period that I was doing uh, virtual assistance for them. Um, that's the kind of results that you need to uh, be focusing on. So yeah, overall again, like this is a very long proposal But it's reading again as if somebody, as if she had came up with this and she's just copying and paste the paste. This is almost like a resume that she has that she's just copying and pasting into each proposal she writes. And so it's just not as effective. It doesn't really appeal to the client. I'm not seeing any questions in here. And it makes me not even want to read the whole thing because I immediately am detecting the fact that this is just a, a, a resume she's written. And she's just copying and pasting whenever she does a proposal and it's not uniquely written. So those are some tips for now. I'll come back to you uh, soon in another video with additional tips as I go through these proposals. I'm going to use some examples of how the proposals can and we'll dive deeper into how they can improve. And I'll, I'll bring up a proposal and go through, hey, if, if you change this, this and this, you're more likely to get an interview. Um, as I continue to show you the behind the scenes of the job hiring process on Upwork. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Go to Freelance Fanman. Again, click that link below if you want the course. And I will review your Upwork profile for free. And I'll see you next time.